Hello, 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 my lovelies, lover faces. How are you doing tonight? It is seven degrees here in Iowa, and that is not taking into account the wind chill factor. At least the wind's not blowing as bad as it was the other day. But um, it's cold up here in my craft room, so I am in my flannel jammies, put a bow in my hair, I'm all ready for bed, and I've got my tea with me in my little country mama's cup. If you guys haven't seen this one yet, it says, a wise girl once said, let that shit go. And she lived happily ever after. And that's how I'm just going to choose to live my life right now. So if anybody wants one, um, Nightbot will be dropping links. If you are here for our live quickie with Black's Tropical Homestead, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. If you're watching the replay, thank you so much for stopping by. I guarantee you're going to love. I've been saying Sherry. I'm going to ask her when she comes up because I heard on another live, I heard it said Cherie. So I apologize if I've been saying it wrong. But Sherry or Cherie and Bobby, they are from Black's Tropical Homestead. I'm going to bring them up. We're going to have a little bit of fun. We're going to have our 10-minute quickie, and then we'll go into a question and answer session. Hello, Baroque Cowgirl, Tiny Tim Posey, Lisa from Yogi Hollow Farm. Thank you. Thank you. Southern Sewn and Grown. Yes, it is seven degrees here in Iowa. That was at about six o'clock. I'm not sure what it is now. And I have my phone on airplane mode. Let me take it off of airplane mode and we will check real quick. Maybe we'll see what it lets me do. I will give you the temperature because I know it's less than that now. And I've got my I've got my lovely soil sister and soil brother sitting backstage. They are anxious to let's get it on. I can see Bobby back there going like this in the background. Let's get it on. Let's get a little Marvin Gaye going in there. So according to my phone, which is a semi-smartphone, it is not a smart smartphone. Hello, Red Road, welcome. We're checking the temperature real quick before we bring everybody up. And my phone is super slow. I swear it's possessed. It has not been behaving itself. But I'm just going to set it down, see if that pops up, and then we'll check the temperature in just a moment. So without any further delay, hello, Leanne from Mennonite Farmhouse. Oh, look, it's I know it's lying now because it says it's 18 degrees. It was seven earlier, but this is what's important. Look. I'll show you right there. Feels like zero. Oh, now it's there. We go. There we go. It it updated. It is seven degrees, no wind, and it feels like seven degrees. See there, seven degrees. I knew it was cold. <laughs> Cross your fingers. I'm crossing everything, even though I'm about ready to have a quickie, Sarah. All right, Lynette. Welcome. Lazy days ahead with Jess and Lisa. Jesse and Lisa. Welcome everybody. So, well, look how yellow it got in here all of a sudden. That's not good for my complexion. I don't know why it got so yellow. Strangeness. Okay, I'm going to bring up Cherie and Bobby. Hello, my friends. You've got a little bit hello. of a delay. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> How are you, my lovelies? Yeah, we're doing great. 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 I'm so glad to hear. I want to know before we even get started, what is that beautiful flower behind you? That is a turmeric flower. From is my it turmeric. really? Mm -hmm. Look, my yeah. skin cone, my skin, my skin cone goes with turmeric today. Yeah, <laughs> it looks like I've ingested far too much turmeric. I don't know why it's so yellow in here all of a sudden. Oh, <laughs> uh, so get tell me, is it sherry or sherry? Either or. Some it's like call is it sherry? A lot of people call me sherry. Okay, so either way, you won't be upset with me. Nope, not at all. <laughs> Okay, so to everybody over in the chat, we're going to be having our interview and our quickie here coming up. So if I don't see something in the chat, just know I'm not ignoring you. It's just that I, with a quickie, I've got to pay attention right here. So yeah. after the quickie, then I'll come over. We'll see if we can get caught up on some things and see how all of that goes. I have all of my questions. I've been shuffling them while I've been chatting with my guests backstage. And so we're going to go ahead and get started. And the first thing that I always like to start a quickie with is a little foreplay. So uh, 
I'm going to say Cherie because it just, you know, for a quickie, we got to have a little bit of twang with it. Um, <laughs> Cherie and Bobby, tell me four interesting facts that you would like to share with everybody in the chat today. And that will be our four play F O U R. Um, I guess I'll tell two. One is I'm afraid to go outside right now. <laughs> two is, um, I don't know. I might eat a bowl of ice cream before I go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you afraid to go outside? It was a snake in the front yard today. That is a good reason to not go outside. <laughs> yep. And Bobby? Um, let's see. One, I'm not a public speaker. <laughs> That's okay. And two, uh, I already had my ice cream cake. <laughs> You're not a public speaker. Nobody's asking you to run for office. <laughs> and so since we're since we're doubling up here and we're having a little three-way action for our quickie tonight, do you guys have a baton to pass back and forth so I know who to ask the question of? What was that? <laughs> we got a purple pig. So whoever has the purple pig will get the question. Who's good? Do, do you have you already decided who's going to start, or do you want to do a rock paper scissors? <laughs> rock paper scissors? No, you got it. Ladies first. <laughs> Ladies first. Ladies first. Okay, it is nine thirty-seven. We're going to go rapid fire as quickly as we can for the next ten minutes and see how many questions we get through. So, uh, Sheree, which movie made you laugh the most? Probably Friday. Okay. <laughs> pass it. Pass it. Pass the pig. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bobby, dogs or cats? Dogs. Okay. Sheree, what's your favorite smell? Monkey poop. What? <laughs> Monkey poop. <laughs> <laughs> we will discuss that later. I think we've got a problem. Bobby, three words to describe yourself. Um, tall, dark, and handsome. Woo! <laughs> like none of us knew that. Uh, let's see. Cherie, something most people don't know about you. I am... <clears throat> Afraid of everything. Oh, <laughs> and I know that you're getting better at eating onions. Bobby, <laughs> what fictional family would you most like to join? Hmm. Adam's family. <laughs> the Adams family? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sheree, what is something that you do to embarrass Bobby? I don't, nothing. <laughs> nothing? You don't even try? I can't. I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> He's shaking his head. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Bobby, what is your favorite song that you are embarrassed to admit that you like? Hmm. Favorite song that I'm embarrassed. She knows. Uh, baby got back. <laughs> baby got back. <laughs> Santa Connor don't want none unless you got blondes on. Okay. <laughs> For me, what was the most rebellious thing you did as a teenager? I'm going to come in close because this is going to be good. <laughs> Drinking with Melissa Jameson. <laughs> uh oh, the stories are going to start flowing. <laughs> Bobby, have you ever gone into the wrong bathroom? Uh, by mistake or on purpose? Well, by mistake. Yes. Well, well, I mean, <laughs> if you did it on purpose, that's a whole nother story. I mean, we, I don't know if we have that much time tonight, but have you ever gone into the wrong bathroom? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, see, this one, this one came up just in perfect harmony here. Cherie, what is something that you dislike that everybody else loves? Drama. Huh? Drama. Drama. Everybody loves drama. This mama here don't love. I'm not a drama. Oop. Sorry. 
Look at me starting the drama. <laughs> I got the cards and it took it off. Okay, Bobby. Drama was a good answer. Have you traveled out of the country? And if so, where? I have not. You have not. I have but I not. know where you want to go. We'll talk about that at maybe another time or later tonight. <laughs> uh, Miss Sheree, what's your favorite beverage? Um, Alcohol or just regular rum? Rum. rum. Is that what you got wasted on with Melissa Jameson? No, that was Mad Dog. <laughs> Mad, Dog and Mary, Mad Dog and, and Mary J. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Bobby, have you ever been in handcuffs? Yes. And you don't have to say why. That's just the answer. <laughs> Cherie, fold your pizza, yes or no? No. No. Okay. Fold it, fold it like you do. Like oh. you fold it like New York style. Um, Bobby, what was your favorite childhood game? Hmm. Probably a little embarrassing, but I used to like um double dutch. Double dutch. <laughs> I love double dutch. Yeah, but I was the only guy that played it. <laughs> I would I would actually probably choke myself with the rope if I tried to get in now on a double dutch. It wouldn't be pretty. <laughs> would not be pretty. Uh Miss Sheree, would you rather a pet sloth or a pet parrot and why? A sloth. A sloth. And why? Well, a parrot talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> uh Bobby, irrational fear. Irrational fear, public speaking. Public speaking. And look at you're doing great. <laughs> uh, Miss Cherie, what is a favorite musical instrument that you would love to learn how to play? The steel drums. Ooh, <laughs> fun. <laughs> Bobby, who would you like to meet, you know, besides me? Hmm. I really don't have anybody. You don't have anybody you'd like to meet? Let's see. Um, I say Will Smith, I guess. Will Smith. <laughs> yeah. I, I really enjoy him as an actor. I really do. Uh, Miss Cherie, do you mind if I call you Miss Cherie? I don't know why I want to, but I want to. <laughs> sure. It kind of puts a whole spin on our little quickie here. It's almost like, okay, I'll shut up. <laughs> what would you pick if a genie gave you one wish? A, a new back. A what? Oh. A what? A new back. A blue back? A new back. A new back. A new back. <laughs> Bobby, what's your favorite candy? Hmm. I would say uh, probably Jolly Ranchers. Jolly Ranchers. What's your favorite flavor of a Jolly Rancher? I'm going to think it right now. I know what it is. Go. Green apple. Oh, I was wrong. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sheree, when you're alone, do you dance? I do. I do too. <laughs> uh, Bobby, what is your ideal career besides homesteading? Ideal. Fishing. <laughs> Fishing. A professional fisherman. That would be yes. awesome. Um, Sheree, name one item on your bucket list. Milk a cow. Ooh, fun. Uh, Bobby, what is your favorite book? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have one. You don't have one? We have to find you one. Yeah, I, I, I can't watch the book. I'll wait for the movie. <laughs> we'll find your favorite book. Sheree, what's your favorite day of the week? Um... Wednesday. 
Wednesday. Hump day. Hump day. day. Really? I guess. <laughs> Every day is like the same. <laughs> <laughs> they all just run together, don't they? <laughs> Bobby, what do you prefer to travel by? Plane, train, or automobile? Automobile. As long as it's automobile. white. Miss Cherie, what is your current guilty pleasure? Um, YouTube. YouTube. I hear that. Yeah, she got it bad. <laughs> uh, Bobby, can you say a phrase in another language? Como tal vous? <laughs> yeah. I and what does that mean? Um, hey, um, <laughs> I, I think it's French for uh, hello. Como tal vous? Does that mean do you speak French? I don't know. How are you? I think it's how are you, Como and vous is you. Como tal vous? How are you? Maybe? Yeah, really good. Uh, Sherry, what's your least favorite chore on the homestead? Um, shoveling dog poop. Oh, God, <laughs> isn't that awful? Yeah, it's like having cows. <laughs> Bobby, what is the scariest thing you've ever done? Hmm. Scariest thing. Hmm. I did a lot of stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I guess the first time I entered a house on a SWAT call a lot. The first time you did what? <laughs> first time I entered a home in a SWAT call out. Oh, dang. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That scares me. <laughs> and I swear this is the one that came up. This is our last question. Mishri, what is your dream vacation destination and why? Butt naked in Jamaica. Butt naked in Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was it. I knew, and I swear that came up that way. <laughs> nakey, nakey on the beach. It's all nakey, good nakey. stuff. It's very, very liberating. Very liberating. Yeah. Well, guys, that's the end of our quick. It was pretty painless. It was. It was. Wasn't it fun? Bobby, you did well. We learned some interesting things. I loved the very last question. I think at some point we're going to have to find out from Bobby why he ended up in handcuffs. Trainer. Oh, they put you in handcuffs so, when you <laughs> Miss Wifey, I have to tell you, I'm tired and my glasses are messing with me. I I read that completely wrong. And I What's almost that? read it out loud. SWAT call. <laughs> <laughs> I almost mixed up my letters. That was really bad. <laughs> oh, well, blind guy, too good in a SWAT call. <laughs> yeah. Melissa, I'm glad you're having a good time. Welcome, welcome. You want us to keep it going. Well, you know what you can do, Southern Sewn and Grown. This is where... We're going to ask uh, Cherie and Bobby to just kind of tell us a little bit about their channel, their homestead, um, a little about about them and their relationship and their marriage. You know, nothing too spicy, but just kind of like, you know, how long you've been together, fun things like that. And if anybody has any questions for them, if you want to ask them your own quickie questions, put them in the comments. Make sure they're in all caps so they catch my attention. And then we will pop it up on the screen and you can ask them if you have any particular questions. And I'm going to put this up here and go back to our comments. Um, amazing questions. Thank you. And yes, Melissa, she would say, but naked in Jamaica. Miss Cherie and I have been discussing that at some point in the past because this mama right here has been butt naked in Jamaica. That may be shocking to some of you. I scared many a fish, <laughs> but it's true. And I went, I went skinny dipping into pirate coves and skinny dipping snorkeling. And for those of you who just can't seem to get that visual, if you're on a little boogie board and you're snorkeling, you know, the back end floats and that's above the water and you're just 18 degrees above the equator, 
hot cross buns is all I'm going to say. <laughs> I had the worst bum sunburn ever, oh. ever. But like I had fun. such a fun time in Jamaica. I call it my second home. Every time I think about going, I just say, I want to go home to Negril. It is an amazing, amazing place. So I hope you guys get to go someday. Yeah, we will. We'll make it there. So <laughs> South, Southern Sewn and Grown has a question for Bobby. And she wants to know, Bobby, how often do you work out? I, it can be six days a week. So two or three days a week. <laughs> and what can you bench press? Um, I don't know. I don't max out. Um, I got to that that age where I don't try to lift a whole bunch of weight. Well, probably a lot of weight to most people, but I don't lift a whole lot of weight. So you go for more reps. Three fifteen. Three fifteen. Yeah, and I work out with that, so I don't really go no higher than that. I'm going to behave myself. <laughs> Come on. We right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This mama don't weigh 315. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I work about every day. It's making your back hurt. Um, what's your favorite? What is your favorite? Um, what is your favorite exercise though, Bobby? Um, <clears throat> That's I, nothing with legs. Yeah, I, I like to lift, but man, I need to get on cardio better. You know, um, I went so long when I was young, just be, having to lift, never having to worry about my weight at all. And as I got older, weight started coming on a little bit, and I still ain't got used to doing cardio. So since I got out of law enforcement, I don't have to run, <laughs> so I don't. That's it. So you, so you had you you really did have a background in law enforcement. I, I did. I yeah. thank you for that. Yeah, they we support absolutely. our blue. We support our Yeah, it was 16 years, Brenda. So are you guys like childhood sweethearts? How long have you been together? Ooh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, we've been together for five years. Five years, yeah. Married for three. Three. It's an three. internet love. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was one of those freak kind of meetups and yeah. it just ended up working out, you know? Yeah. <laughs> It was just supposed to be like a quickie type thing. <laughs> we know how those quickies go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes they last a little longer than a quickie. Huh? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> but you got to put a ring on it, make it last a little longer. <laughs> yeah. So Sarah over at E3 Farmstead wants to know, what was your craziest date night? I know what, what the future me? one will be for you two. <laughs> I, I I mean I want to say our craziest we didn't have any crazy date nights I can think of but our craziest thing we've done together was go to the nude beach but yeah. I don't think we had any crazy date nights I can't think of one actually <laughs> no have you been to the nude beach at night no, no, that kind of negate we the purpose. Yeah, yeah. we want to. <laughs> I have, and that was a crazy date night. Was <laughs> you, gotta it? The, you gotta go to the nude beach at night. Yeah. What's the what's the best part of being out there at night? I'm curious. <laughs> you don't Nobody scare the fishies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can do anything you want. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I I've been on the beach at night and was amazed when I saw lights come up and noticed that it was a lot of people around me on the ground. <laughs> you don't know where they are. <laughs> Talk about sex on the beach. <laughs> all right. It's all fun. Hello, Melissa. Welcome. They are a perfect couple. Isn't that fun? Um, here we've got another question. Red Road Home says it says that uh, she's retired law enforcement and wants to know, Bobby, do you miss it? She does. Um, no, nah, I kind of got burned out. That's why I, I stopped. I mean, I, I I say it if I missed it, I'll get back into it. And I haven't got to that point yet. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I love, you know, what I've done and the, the purpose I got out of it. 
but it's a lot more to it than that. So, yeah. you know, I decided I need to get out of Okay. Sarah's Sarah's kind of laughing at my moon burn booty. <laughs> I did glow in the dark a little bit that night. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. <laughs> so you couldn't hide from nobody in the dark. <laughs> I could I couldn't hide. Yeah. Hello, Donna. Welcome. Hey Donna. It's the ginger. What are we? Ginger hating generator haters. Generator <laughs> haters. Yeah, because I wanted her gen generator that she won from Simple Life Reclaim. So they oh. called her generator hater. <laughs> <laughs> So tell us a little bit about your homestead for those who have not had the pleasure of going over and seeing what you're all about. So we have a one acre homestead. We have over a hundred fruit plants and a few vegetables, <laughs> very few vegetables. Um, <laughs> most of our plants are tropical. Yeah, most of them are tropical. We have 17 yeah. chickens, three rabbits and two dogs. And I can probably make just about anything from homemade if we need it. <laughs> nice. So yeah. we do raise our chickens. We raise chickens for meat and we have separate chickens for eggs. We have rabbit for meat and rabbits for the parents. <laughs> <laughs> and just so we have the rabbits to take to the Nakey Nakey Beach, do their business. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting hot. <laughs> yeah. It's not because the rabbits. It's just like a really weird hot flash. Um, <laughs> Sarah wants to know what kind of bunnies do you have? New Zealand. New Zealand. New Zealand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Melissa says Miami girl here. Yes. That night is cough, cough. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where I was, it didn't matter if it was the uh, beach at night, the beach in the day, the catamaran, it didn't matter. It yeah. was always interesting. <laughs> Miami was hot. Yes. We went in all Miami this. is hot. hot. Mm -hmm. Too hot. <laughs> you need What's to go at night. Favorite, what is your favorite tropical fruit that you're growing there on your homestead? Mine's is Jamaican cherry. Oh, mm -hmm. no, maybe not. Maybe lemon guava yeah and lemon, lemon guava, guava is not necessarily um tropical it, it's tropical but it it can be grown in a lot of different yeah. areas um we are in savannah so we are not in a tropical area um subtropical we are dry we are in subtropical and most of our plants are tropical so there's a little challenge to it so that's one thing about our, cha our channel that most people would know is that we actually have to do <laughs> some <laughs> You know some things to get these plants to grow here so i like that question what's that <clears throat> yeah um wifey wants to know tell us about the pigs you're about to add i'm not clear on that <laughs> and you were about to add no pigs you're not about to add any pigs look at her look at you like really we're not <laughs> no. we're not too sure about pigs yet you know there's no rush yeah. There's no rush. You add little things as you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just we trying to figure out, you know, if they would work in this type of neighborhood. I don't think so, but we got to keep our neighbors in mind too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can you can bribe your your neighbors with eggs, but there's not much you can do with a squealing pig. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How loud are you? I mean, that's the thing. I don't know how loud it is for uh, my my pig actually barks. Oh really? Yeah. If you startle him, he will. It's the strangest noise, but it's it's not it's not so much a, of an oink oink or a grunt grunt, but he full on barks, mm, and wow. it's scary because he has tusks out each side that are about this mm. long, and he's just a little pot belly pig. He was only I don't know three pounds when we got him. But he's a couple hundred pounds now with these big tusks. Mm -hmm. And he, he's got a forehead. His eyebrows are so heavy that, like, he can barely see because he's got this, this forehead. But I just love him to death. And he's my little Pigglesworth. 
So now Brenda Baker asked a question, and I don't know if she's putting this to you or putting it to us, but she wants to know, did your family know about the beach trips before you said it on YouTube? <laughs> so, yeah, we went to the beach. That was um, in spring. I think it was in the spring. It was early summer, and we told our family so we wow, only we, been on YouTube for we put like on two. Yeah, we put on Facebook. <laughs> we only been on YouTube for two months, so they knew a long time before then. But they pretty cool. Like my mom was like, "Oh, that's so neat." <laughs> so <laughs> my mom was like, like, "My mother was like this." She was like, "Alicia," it's like what? Yeah, his mom was like, girl naked? "She said like a few months later she was here and I said something about it and she said y'all really went to the new beach." I said, "Yeah." She said. Yeah. And got and Bobby got naked. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she was the only one like, okay. <laughs> we went we went to Jamaica for our twenty fifth wedding anniversary, and so before we went on this vacation, we had a big huge party at our home. This is when we lived in Southern California, and had the whole backyard all done up all tropical with a tropical theme and everything, and my husband's sisters had flown down and we took them to the airport at the end of that weekend. And this was, this was, we were able to actually go to the gate with them and we're sitting there at the gate with them and they got in line to get on the plane so that they couldn't escape. They're in line. And we said, Hey, by the way, uh, for, for our anniversary vacation, we're going to Jamaica to a nudist resort. <laughs> And their jaws hit the floor and they couldn't say anything. <laughs> they couldn't get out to talk. Just, I just remember them going, oh, clutching their pearls. They were just like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, he didn't know. I I said, I mentioned the new beach like the week before we went to um, West Palm, but I didn't tell him that's where we were going. And I packed our clothes. And so he just got in the car, ready to ride. And when I turned off the highway, he said, oh, is the nursery back here? And I said, or oh, he asked me something. And I was like, I don't know. I just drove until I pull in the park. And then he said, that lady didn't have a, I can see that lady nipples or her breasts or something. And I was like, yeah, she had on a fishnet top. All her, all her Ghibli bits were hanging out. <laughs> yeah. I said, you want to put on your swimming trunk? He said, no, I'm going to keep my shorts on. I said, okay. We'll see how long that lasts. So, but he you was know, the first one ready. Where we went, the men had to completely lose all their clothing if yeah. they wanted to be on the nude side of the beach. Mm. But the women could either go topless or bottomless. They had a choice or they could go completely yeah. free. And <laughs> we asked, we said, why is it that the men don't get to have a choice? They have to remove everything, but the women get a choice. And they said, have you ever seen naked men fight? <laughs> and I said no and they said that's right if somebody gets jealous or they think somebody's looking at their woman they're not going to go up and fight somebody because they don't have any clothes on <laughs> is that they really have fight? the new beach word about if somebody looking <laughs> no <laughs> I mean, by looking yeah. yeah but no I will I will say though the truth of the matter is after the initial giggles nobody's looking yeah, yeah. nobody's looking it's all right here yeah. And uh, it's the great it's the great equalizer. You don't know who you're sitting to next at a swim up bar. It could be a construction worker. It could be a lawyer. Mm. It yeah. could be right. somebody that uh, is is a doctor or it could be a taxi driver. You don't know. Yeah. Right. And so there's no it's it's that equal playing field. Nobody judges anybody on anything. And you can just you get the chance to just talk to people. Yeah. And it was it was a really, really nice visit. We really enjoyed it. Um, I think I shared earlier, and I don't know if you guys were in on it at the time, that when we flew out, we had a long layover. I think it was in North Carolina or South Carolina. And I had fallen asleep on the floor. And as I was laying on my side, my dress kind of popped over a little bit. And there was this man standing over me taking a picture of what was exposed. I was like, oh, my God, my virtue. Well, a, couple days, a couple days at that resort and I'm like running around with no clothes on. It's like, I barely got dressed to get on the plane to come home. So I had to my tell husband you was like, are you going to get dressed to get on the plane? I was like, why? I, <laughs> I, really, I really think I wore, I wore, I don't know, a skorts 
and a and a mm. bikini top with just a little cover. That's what I wore on the plane ride back home. I need to hear the story about the beaver butt again. <laughs> because somebody will not eat pudding, cannot eat banana pudding anymore. Yes, it's all your fault. <laughs> Is it all my fault? <laughs> Castorium. I you know that. It's a vanilla flavoring and a raspberry flavoring. I'm sure if you want to try your banana pudding, you'd be safe. Mm. Negative. <laughs> I already tried it. His mom made him a big bowl of banana pudding, and he would not eat it. I said, well, I, sh I was going to bake a cake, but you got banana pudding. And he said, oh, you can throw that in the trash. The whole bowl. Now, did but she make I it from scratch, it. though? Well, I didn't watch how she made it, but I did eat it. It's, it's, and it it's just, mine. you know, just the thinking what it was and, you know, how pudding kind of go in your mouth and it kind of sit in the back of your throat. And then, yeah, it was kind of like, yeah, I want to come back up now. So I can't mess with no it. No more beaver butt for now. <laughs> but if your mama makes the pudding and she makes it from scratch, there will mm. not be any beaver butt in there. Mm. What you call from scratch? <laughs> Like where she makes her own custard with the milk and everything. No, I'm sure she got some pudding boxes. In a box. box. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, um, recently I've been I've been diagnosed with diabetes and I've been trying to find different recipes. Mm -hmm. And I don't eat meat or any meat byproducts or anything. And uh, mm -hmm. I saw this recipe on YouTube for pancakes. And I thought, oh. I can make some like keto pancakes that will be low in carbs that I can have. And they get to like the third ingredient. It's like, now we're going to take all these unflavored pork rinds and we're going to grind them up in our blenders. Like, click, I'm out. <laughs> pork yeah, rind keto. pancakes. Keto Not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know if I would do pork rind pancakes if I weren't almost a vegan. No, I wouldn't. Definitely. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> No, 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 no. Beaver butt. <laughs> Brenda wants to know what's wrong with banana pudding. Uh, Brenda, in an earlier, I, I did a, the 30 questions that uh, Marino uh, Mysteries posed to me. And one of them was, what's the weirdest fact that I know? And the weirdest fact that I know is about castorium, which is a natural flavoring. So the FDA considers it a natural flavoring. And sometimes it is used in certain... Uh, ingredient as an ingredient in some certain things some of that being possibly jello or pudding or who knows what but it, it is a natural flavoring for usually raspberry and also often vanilla and what that flavoring is is the the anal sacs of a beaver so i'm if you look at a beaver though i don't think it's like it's basically like your dog's anal glands. Let's just say that. <laughs> so, and I was, I was like Bobby, when I learned that, I remember getting home at the end of a really stressful day and I opened up a raspberry Smirnoff mm -hmm. and I was sitting there and I got about three or four sips into that Smirnoff and it's like, nope, can't do it. <laughs> I don't know what's in here. <laughs> that was the last, I can't enjoy raspberry tea anymore. Oh, it could have been anything besides the anal sack. I think I would have been okay. <laughs> I thought I was okay until I actually ate it. And then I was like, I'm like, I'm, I love pudding. <laughs> ain't nothing going to stop me. And then I was like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, it'll, it'll mess with you. It'll mess with you. Um, <laughs> Wifey says, I know I'm late on this topic, but we can't go to the new beach because Corey will request the Braille version. <laughs> <laughs> Until he touch a man, then he'll be like, "Oh, never mind." Never mind. <laughs> yeah. yeah I thought a good joke about that, but I can't say it on here. So, um, somebody, there it is. Melissa says, "I saw a TikTok video for sweet potato pancakes." Um, now that sounds good. Sweet potato. Imagine. Oh, I don't, I've never even seen the video, but I can see it now. Sweet potato pancakes mm -hmm. with some melted butter, some mm. sugar-free maple syrup, and crushed pecans. 
white feet make those. Mm, that sounds so good. Yeah, it do. It do sound good. That sounds, doesn't that sound good? <laughs> I'm going to have, have to make that this life. weekend. Thank you for telling me about that, Melissa. I appreciate that. I yeah. appreciate that. I want all the sugar inside my circle. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I do too. I do have to tell you guys, though, I took my blood sugar right before I came up tonight. Mm. And it was 124, which is the lowest it's been since I've started this journey. Good job. So 80 to 120 is the range I'm looking for. So 120 yep. will be the high end of that range. 123. Mm. And my very first finger stick a month ago was 312. <laughs> you are doing great. Yeah, Brenda, oh. I think you screwed now. <laughs> uh, uh, you, you think I'm ready for some regular syrup now? No, no I'm talking about no. Brenda. Brenda said she shouldn't have asked because she loved banana pudding. Right, but if you make it from if you make it at scratch from home, you should be okay. Um, it's stuck in the mind. Well, if I you know, know what's in it, if you know for sure that it's not beaver butt, then you but that's the know. thing you don't know because you don't <laughs> know is the natural vanilla flavor in something vanilla, or are they just saying it's the natural flavoring because the FDA lets them get away with it and it's castorium. I've read reports that said it, it's not as common as what people fear. Mm -hmm. but Just like Boo Buffet said, that's why she make her own. That's and right. I, mm -hmm. I did a video last year for, for banana pudding. I was so proud of it. I did so good. And then at the very end, I realized I forgot to put the bananas in. <laughs> <laughs> I had this beautiful <laughs> banana cream pie with mm -hmm. fresh custard and everything. I forgot to put the bananas in. <laughs> We got the roots. Yeah, I don't eat banana pudding. I don't <laughs> eat banana anything but bananas. Southern Sun <laughs> Girl says we need to grow our own vanilla. I make my own yeah. vanilla extract. Have you guys tried that yet? No. Oh, that's fun. You should try that. We will, and chocolate, and a whole lot of other things. Almond extract, about mint extract. Melissa, good number. Thank you. Thank you. Your your sugar was 515 when you found out you were diabetic. Melissa, my A1C was 13.8. Yeah. I'm, so if I'm, you guys I'm, know anything I'm, about diabetes, 13.8 is just like, oh my ridiculous. gosh. Yeah. My aunt's was like that when she stroked out. Yeah. See, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm pretty fortunate that I didn't have that issue. Yeah. But, uh, Making your own vanilla extract is so good. You should do that. And then you can make your own pudding with your own vanilla extract. And you will know that there's no beaver butt in there. That's a good idea. Yeah, it you is. You will know. Just um, go online that. and get yourself some Madagascar vanilla beans. And you just put them in a mason jar. You split them with a knife. And mm -hmm. then you cut them in half and put them in a mason jar with a whole bunch of yummy, yummy vodka. And you let it sit. Mm. Mm. Can you grow vanilla? I can't grow vanilla. I don't know. I know the vanilla we got was from Madagascar, so I don't know what kind of growing mm -hmm. conditions it would need. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna look that up. That's something. Yeah, I look it up and see because that might be something. I mean, gosh, you guys could really have a gold mine there if you could do that. Mm -hmm. That'll be. Uh, wifey That'll be wants you to, to uh, tell us about your recent zucchini cake that you tried and loved, even though we shouldn't. With Alicia doing so well with her numbers, it's okay. <laughs> it's a zucchini bread. It just tastes like cake. But I made <laughs> lemon zucchini. It was lemon zucchini. Oh, and it, great! Yum. Yeah. It's good. Now, lemon. do you have um, do you have an issue with zucchini like you do with onions that you're getting over? Yeah, I don't like zucchini. It was awful. <laughs> I tried it and I was like, who the hell eat this? <laughs> so it needed the sugar and it needed the lemon. And then it was okay. It's good when it's in baked things. Yeah, because even my mother-in-law was like, ew, no. But when I took her a piece, they were like, oh, this is good. I'm like, yeah, it's zucchini in it. <laughs> so, <laughs> mm -hmm. so, I mean, right. something tastes so good. I was like... I gotta if get I go to a teppanyaki grill, if I go to a teppanyaki grill and they're doing all the veggies and there's there's a zucchini in there, 
hubby will watch me. It's like, all right, I'll choke one of them down, but then the rest are getting shoved to the side of my plate with the mm -hmm. mushrooms and my so onions, the other and stuff. The peppers. Onion, peppers, all of that. <laughs> I like the onions. I like the peppers, but the zucchini. And here's why. Mm -hmm. When I was about 11, not quite 12, mm -hmm. we were very, very, very poor. We actually lived in a converted chicken barn. And uh, the man across the street was growing zucchini. And he told my mother, you can come get all the zucchini you want. We've got everything out of the garden that we want. You can come get all the zucchini you want. Well, they weren't zucchini. They were zucchini. Yeah. I could just let them go and then said, yeah. come get them. My yeah. mother would go over with a wheelbarrow and she would bring home these two foot, three foot zucchinis about that big around. And since we were poor, my mother wouldn't let any of it go to waste. We had zucchini pancakes, zucchini bread, zucchini soup, zucchini fritters, anything my mother could shred it up and make zucchini out of. That's what we had for days and days and days and days. And it's like, I swore I would never eat zucchini. I can't stand it. Yeah. I will suffer through and eat some of it, but a zucchini bread I would eat. Yeah, it's definitely good. And with the lemon, it made it like a lemon pound cake. And Broke Cowgirl, she has a really good point. And I wanted to do this this year because for the first time ever, I tried to grow zucchini. But they, I just got a little plant with some blossoms. And I never got anything else. She says you can make mock apple pie with zucchini and mock pineapple too. And I've seen those recipes. You can cut your zucchini up and you can actually can it. Um with your seasonings and everything and you can make i shouldn't say seasonings your spices and if you put them with pineapple juice and can them it's mock pineapple and mock apple pie and it's supposed to taste just like it really yeah that's what i've heard and it's called um a zapple pie mm. and pine's apple because of the z so you put apple juice in it and and then you put pineapple juice your in apple it. pie filling you would have like your sure gel and your spices and your lemon juice and the zucchini and it would make that apple pie filling mm, okay just your spices now i i don't know the recipe off the top of my head i don't know if you would put apple juice but i would think you'd put your apple pie spices and your sure gel and you would put everything together with your lemon juice and and you would get it all mixed up and you'd can it the way you would if you were going to do apple pie filling Oh, you can it. You can it. Oh, I'm like a pie with zucchini that tastes like apples. Well, I imagine if you, I imagine you could probably just bake it fresh too that way, and it would probably taste. It'd be something to try and see. Mm, no, no, I don't know. <laughs> I never ate zucchini. I grew some, and the bugs ate it all. Somebody likes it. I did shred <laughs> it and froze it for zucchini bread, but I just don't know. <laughs> yeah, zucchini. Try zucchini. Try lemon zucchini bread. Lemon that, zucchini bread. Yeah, that one worked great for us. I think that the I think the key point in that is the lemon because I bet you it's just very nice and fresh. Mm -hmm. Yep, because mm. I zest my lemon and squeeze it. Everything was fresh, so yeah. Very yeah. very nice. Southern Sun and Grown says she'll just stick with she'll stick with cucumbers. <laughs> I stick with apples. <laughs> Baroque Cowgirl says no apple juice. You cook the zucchini with the cinnamon and the sugar and you use it for pie. Ooh. And she says she doesn't can it. The recipes I've seen say to can it, but she says she freezes it. Mm. Mm. That probably <laughs> Humphrey says this all sounds suspicious. <laughs> very, very <laughs> suspicious. Zucchini is not as suspicious, though, as beaver anal glands. Oh. And what's was it That's you guys that were saying that somebody wanted right. to know if they'd ever eaten marinated beaver? <laughs> what? It, hey, what? Marinated beaver. <laughs> <laughs> marinated beaver? Yeah. With onion and green pepper? <laughs> <laughs> and a little zucchini? Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm the person that's wondering who tried the beaver anal gland and right? like this tastes like vanilla. <laughs> right? Who looked at a beaver's butt and said, hmm, I think well, I'm going to give that a taste. Yeah. I'm sure it looked like something like. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I just, I don't understand it. I don't bad. understand it. But you know, I mean, people eat some pretty crazy weird things. Mm -hmm. What yeah. gets me is that the FDA lets it go into our recipes as natural. Mm -hmm. So somebody's talking about a channel up here. The Modern Yeoman, their channel has really taken off this year. Awesome people. So we'll have to check them out. Everybody is new to us, of course. <laughs> so um, Celtic Farm Roots, I can't even talk now. Did you know that the plants don't even start producing vanilla beans until after three years? So that's oh, no, something to consider, guys, if you were looking into that. Mm -hmm. We'll never grow that. So is it just a bush or is it a, a tree? That's one of the things I want to know. Um, And, you know, I have no problem with buying a, a already grown Yeah, we tree. won't. It could be a couple of years old when I get it. Yeah, we you know, will Yeah. You don't want the little tiny little things. No, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. We'll we travel to go established. Yes. Yeah, we, we travel to get all of our plants. Like, we are not the internet, the online ordering type, because we like to see what we're getting. So I'll drive eight hours one way and turn around and come right back home <laughs> with a car wow. on the before I order things. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, when it comes to fruit trees, I know we got a lot of people in the community that love growing stuff from seeds, but it's a lot of plants that take years and Sometimes years you before you get fruit. Yeah. So yeah. if you don't buy something that's already grown, that's on a rootstock, yeah, you more you can wait ten years sometimes for for fruit, and I'm not right, yeah. right. No, I'm not. I it, you know just <laughs> like um. Southern Sun and Grown said she's she's impatient. I'm impatient too. I I have to have some instant. Yeah, yeah, I'm impatient too. Like we were stalking our uh, um passion fruit vines like crazy this year. It was I know they were like, will you please leave me alone? <laughs> <laughs> we were choking those things to death. <laughs> I can honestly say I don't think I've ever had a passion fruit. Really? Or a dragon fruit. I which one it. has which one has the the white flesh with the little black seeds? This one is yellow flesh with well. She's talking about dragon fruit. Dragon, we have dragon, dragon fruit. fruit. Yeah, I've never had that either. Dragon fruit got they got multiple uh, different kind of flesh. You can yeah. get a white, red, purple, you know, pink looking, but all of them got the little black seeds in it. Yeah, it's they taste they all taste different, but mm. the same as the passion fruit. We got these are two different varieties, and they taste different. So. Now, I love mangoes. Do you guys call mangoes. them mangoes or mangoes? Mangoes. Mangoes. Yes. That's what I call them. Some people call them mangoes. It's like I have mangoes. Yeah. Mangoes are delicious, especially fresh. We have learned to never put them in the refrigerator <laughs> <laughs> because they taste great, like straight off the tree. Like these things. Lemon guava. This is the sweetest guava I have ever tasted. Never tried it. It's like a little piece of candy. Really? Excellent. And the trees are prolific growers yeah. of fruiters. So you get a ton of fruit on them. Yeah. The rabbits nice. came and took took them off one day. <laughs> <laughs> I will have to look and see if I ever go into one of our bigger towns. I'll have to see if I can find a Trader Joe's or something, see if they've got a lemon guava to try, because I've never mm. had it. It's delicious. Yeah. And I know our little town won't have them. You probably can grow it in the pot, mm -hmm. so you can actually grow, um, bring it in the house in the winter. Because you definitely, oh look, seven degrees, and it feels like seven degrees. Like what that, is that? That hurt your bone. That hurt my bone. <laughs> that's that's actually warm because my husband looked it up. He said this time last year, or I forget how many years ago, it was like negative one. Mm -hmm. And the day we moved into this farmhouse with the wind chill factor, it was negative fifty. Mm. What? Really? It gets that cold in the Uh-huh. Uh -huh. There are many days that we were actually working to go to school. Huh? People working go to school or y'all just shut down? Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, they work and go to school. As, as long as we're not snowed in and there's not big drifts and we can actually get out of the driveway and down the road, my husband will go to work. Wow. I just, I just stay here and I look at the snow and have coffee. <laughs> yeah, that's how I'm on rainy days. I'm like, 
like the day I would go to the window and look out, I definitely wasn't going out, but I was like, hey, look nice out there. <laughs> you know how good I do up there? I've been in Atlanta when it was cold and my skin hurt. Mm -hmm. It was just like my skin was actually hurting. And I'm sure it was like probably 20 something degrees, seven degrees. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> and it's chilly up here. It's chilly up here. Like, even though I've got chilly. my nightgown on, my, my calves are, are just freezing. They're cold. Mm -hmm. Um. So Baroque Cowgirl says asparagus will grow for a long time. My asparagus came from my husband's granny's aunt's old homestead. She was born in 1850, dig them up and planted them in her garden. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. That's great. We have yeah. wild asparagus that grows in our ditches. Yeah, I remember you saying that. I love asparagus too. And, and people come and pick it and then they try to trade my own asparagus for eggs. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> hey, I got this basket of asparagus. Yeah, I got my own. <laughs> Good night, Casey and Steven. I don't eat asparagus. Southern Stone and Grown, she is in Tennessee. Yeah, you could grow some tropicals there. I mean, you just have to protect them when it's super cold. Mm -hmm. Bring them in, keep them in pots. But like he got banana trees that only get like five feet tall, so they could grow in a pot. But Ooh. people up north have banana trees and they fruit in the snow. They just don't um, stay on the tree long enough to ripen. Mm -hmm. So, Someone wanted to know where I was, where it was negative 50. I am in Iowa, almost to Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And we get that polar vortex that comes down mm -hmm. and we just, we just get colder than Alaska sometimes. And there's, there was a time of, I don't know, two, three years ago, we had like negative 27, the actual temperature, mm. negative 27, negative 29 for, I don't know, 20, 30 days straight that it was that cold. That's crazy. It's cold. Oh, it's yeah. cold. That is yeah. not fair. <laughs> but you know what? I love it here. And when we first moved here and we moved here from California and people said, why would you move here? And I said, I would rather live where there's cold weather than live where there's cold hearts. Yeah. And no That's offense true. to anybody in California, but where we lived. Yeah, no, my arthritis, my arthritis would hurt, would hate me. <laughs> like now when it's cool a little bit, my arthritis is like, Hey, wait a minute. Yeah. That type of weather. Yeah. And I'm from, I'm from the South, the South from front right here in Savannah, Georgia. And when I go up north, you know, the interaction with people there is, is so much different. Like, you know, speaking to somebody and them looking at you like you're crazy. Yeah. Like, I'm not used to nobody speaking to me mm -hmm. or telling somebody, thank you. They think you're trying to be smart, you know. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I understand the cold hearts. And, but. Yeah. When I would come out here to visit my family. I remember one time specifically, I walked into the little store here. And as I walked in, everybody stopped what they were doing and they looked up and they smiled at me. And I was like, do I have something in my food? <laughs> Are my pants unzipped? Why did everybody stop and look at me and smile? It's like, you're all weird. <laughs> Everybody's just nice and friendly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that happened to me one time when I went through West Virginia. <laughs> But it didn't smile at me. <laughs> yeah, I found out later why they was doing that. I was like, okay, let's get in the car. We don't need to stop till we get to where we're going. <laughs> there was another time I walked in somewhere where everybody just kind of stopped what they were doing and looked at me and smiled. And that's when I was in SeaWorld and I walked into the men's room. <laughs> and when you walked in, there was this long corridor and there were some mirrors. And I was like, I'd been splashed by dolphins and I was kind of checking to make sure my mascara was okay in my hair. And I walked in and I was actually standing in the full bathroom and there were only like two or three toilet stalls in front of me. And I thought, you would think SeaWorld would have more than two or three stalls <laughs> for all the women that have to go to the bathroom. And that's when I turned a little bit to the left and I saw the 20 urinals with men all lined up at the urinals. Yeah. And they all just kind of stopped and looked at me and they were smiling. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and I really did. I went, oh, and I ran out. And then for the rest of the day, people were like, hey, 
in the bathroom. <laughs> Come on in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. FR Humphrey says, I cannot do cold. Ooh. Yeah, me either. Oh, my goodness. I'm oh, from goodness. Virginia, but now I'm just not for it. So. I'm Family's from Chicago. I moved there for a year, took shorts and shirts. I didn't know any better. <laughs> yeah. 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 We've had friends that have come out here at wintertime to visit and they'll say, well, I went to the store and I got myself some snow boots and a jacket. And it's like, yeah, you got snow boots and jacket for, you know, somebody that's going to go to Big Bear for the day to the ski slopes where it's really not that cold. It is not the same kind of cold here. Yeah. And they find oh, out real quick. We get Grove Vanilla. Hmm. We like 10A and 11A plants <laughs> they always say oh you can't grow that in georgia okay <laughs> just put it in my card and actually <laughs> but you do okay with it everything everything except one cog shell mango but i don't think cog shell like us or this area so <laughs> we won't bother they with the rest of our mangoes. like we have everything and that cog shell never make it so Hmm. That's interesting information, yeah. so definitely yeah, um, thank you. look at that. Yeah, like a lot of our plants are 10 or higher. Definitely not eight, but you know, we we do the extra work or whatever it takes to protect them, but let them feel a little coolness so they don't just be like, oh, a little bit, we'll take them out. So, but we have really sensitive plants like our sour sop. Um, the Jamaican cherry is supposed to be all very sensitive, but they still doing good. And we dropped down to the 40 or so. Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that sounds so not cold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've never heard of Jamaican cherries. I'll have to look into that. That sounds interesting as well. Now, when I went to Jamaica, though, it was before I became a vegetarian and the jerk chicken. Mm. That was so good. So our Jamaican cherries, our neighbor is Jamaican, and he says these are not Jamaican cherries. <laughs> they consider a Jamaican cherry the Barbados. Barbados. Mm -hmm. So when he saw Barbados, he said, yeah, that's the Jamaican cherry, but we it's called a strawberry tree or Montengia. Yeah, those are a bunch of different names for yeah, the same tree. But it's a Jamaican cherry. So it looked like a little strawberry um flower if you have a strawberry plant that's what the jamaican cherry flower look like mm -hmm. but oh. that tree is loaded it grows so fast <laughs> you wouldn't believe it because it went from knee high to eight feet nine feet in three or four months wow and now so yeah. i think if in a couple of years we have more people in our area growing some of these trees we would probably have something to do with it because a lot of people probably never tried it because they didn't think they could. So, yeah, yeah, and, you know, we got everything. I mean, papaya that's our papayas are full of fruit, both have fruit. So, everything we grow, you know, seem to be doing great. We got a miracle tree that they say can't grow in this area and it's got fruit on it right now. So, it's just, you know, I tell people if you want to try it, try it. Mm. Sure. You know, you may have to do something to protect it a little bit more, but don't let somebody tell you you definitely can't grow it because they just haven't tried it. Yeah, and if you fail next time, try something a little different. Yeah, if you fail what twice, I probably would give that you that little saying: "Grow where you're planted." Hmm. That little saying, you know, like uh, it, it's like grow where you're planted. Just grow where God plants you. Yeah. So try it. it. Try, try some it. stuff. Try. Because yep. F.R. Humphrey says down here, he says, I want to try some tropicals. They say they want to try some tropicals. Well, follow yeah. Black's Tropical Homestead so you can learn about what they're growing, how they're growing it, what they're doing on their little one acre that has so many beautiful trees and bushes and vines and all of this beautiful tropical fruit. Yeah, follow she them. Is, that is Felicia, I remember. She was in my lab this morning. Oh, Felicia. Okay, I'm sorry that I said that wrong then. Yeah, and everything we grow and um we'll let you know exactly. Yeah. I mean if it if we fail with it, we'll let you know yep. that we fail with it and we will tell you what we're gonna do the next time and try to make it a 
That's what it says. Right. So far, so good. So uh, Celtic Roots wants to know, trivia question, do you know what Chicago is named after? Hmm. Chicago, the state? The the city of Chicago the, in Illinois. What? How did it get its name? Chicago, sure. Chicago. I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. <laughs> we we don't know, Celtic Roots. You're gonna have <laughs> yeah, to tell us. Know. You're gonna have to tell us in the chat so we can know. Don't leave us hanging. Yeah, I'm curious now. <laughs> Thank you for dropping the links, Brenda. Thank you so much for dropping those links. We appreciate that. Brenda Baker, we appreciate you all the time. <laughs> She's a wonderful, wonderful mod. Yes. Exactly. You don't know till you try it. So let's see. This has not happened lately, but we're going to try. I'm going to post the link. If anybody wants to come up and just join in and say hi to Sheree and Bobby real quick, you can. Yeah, come um, talk to us. Real quick. Come out and play. <laughs> come out and play. Um, we don't bite much. You don't bite hard. <laughs> um, tell me about this, this Halloween party you guys went to all dressed up. The one when my husband had on a skirt and no nothing <laughs> under. Did you have on anything under your skirt? Um, yeah, drawers. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Alicia was like, <laughs> I have I to tell you, shorts, but you probably could have saw them a little bit. So I just. <laughs> but we it went was a to guy a guy. <laughs> We went to a Halloween party one time, and. Four of the guys dressed up like the Spice Girls. <laughs> and there was this guy who was dressed up like Ginger Spice. He had on the red wig and the makeup, and he had on a red dress. And you got a few drinks in him, and then he just sat like a guy. Well, he had nothing on underneath that dress. <laughs> and he just sitting there. And I looked over to say something. I was like, good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Did you hear the guy that was hanging out? About, you heard the guy that was talking to us. He um he wanted me to sit down. He got up and wanted me to sit down in the chair and spray my leg out. I'm like, I said I ain't got nothing on. He's like, um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I pass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really weird. <laughs> It's all good times, good times, good times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I like. And I tell people all the time, you know, we have a great sense of humor. So don't be afraid to have fun because that's what we're here for. We definitely don't do drama and all this. We have fun. We have fun conversations. You know, we keep it respectful. At a certain time, it's like we can tip a little bit, but, you know, we have fun. We yeah. learn. We teach. You know, we are here to network and and yeah. and grow together. We're so. just trying not to hurt our channel or nobody else's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, you know. Yeah. I don't, I don't think our nakey nakey will get any either of us in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I but, said, we came into the world that way. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Overall, YouTube it. has been great to us. You know, meeting all y'all just. The crazy part is I just met all of y'all within the last two and a half months. And it feel like forever. Like even Casey was like, well, I think like four months ago or five months ago. And I'm like, nope, that wasn't us <laughs> because we only been here for two months. So and your channel's doing so great. Yeah. Yeah. I, I network. I love meeting people. So yes. I get around and I talk. You see how I am. I talk to everybody. <laughs> It's like somebody asked today, what is a soil sister? And Melissa Berrien was like, go to Black Tropical Homestead <laughs> and find out what a soil sister is. That's it. I'm like, I'm sorry. I didn't mean, I mean, but, you know, we, <laughs> well, you know, I'll, I'll share with you the very first time you and I had any interaction. And I, I'm going to be honest that I don't remember what it was, mm -hmm. but you called me your soil sister. It's like, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> I love her. I love her already because terms of endearment just get me. And when you just without hesitation called me your soil sister, I was like, that's it. I'm done. And I used to have a coworker that I had never met. It was only like my second interaction with her on the internet. 
And uh, she said, okay, sunshine, I'll talk to you later. It's like, oh, I love you. <laughs> I'll be your best friend. And she and I are still friends. It's been, I don't know, 15, 16 years. But it was the, yes, like what, what Melissa is saying, it's the connection. Yeah. It's, it's that instant connection. And, and when you addressed people and you addressed me for the first time as, you know, giving me the little emojis and calling me soil sister, I was like, I really like her. <laughs> My friend, she used to call everybody lovey. I mean, when I met her, she was in her hundreds already. Everybody. Oh, thank you, lovey. Oh, you're so sweet, lovey. Lovey this. And but me, she had a whole new name for me. It was Queenie. And oh. she would speak out of every, she would say, oh, Queenie, I'm so, so glad you're here. And I'm like, you got so many caregivers. Why do I stick out so bad? But she knew who I was. He was Parky and I was Queenie. So she knew when it was Parky, it was like, no, oh, where's wow. Queenie? So it, it's funny how people have their own name and it's like, oh, she's so sweet. But yeah, I call, and we call everybody. If I can't tell if you're a man or a woman, I just say soil family. Sometimes I'm typing so fast, I just say soil family. But everybody, we consider everybody, whether you garden or not, still our soil family. So thank right. you so much, Tony Grown. But the thing is, we haven't met no bad people yet. You know, everybody in the community has no. been great, and so it it don't it don't feel bad you know, addressing people with terms of endearment because, you know, we haven't met no bad people yet. Now, would that change? We, I'm sure we yeah. will at some point, yeah. but so far it's been great. Yeah, it's, a, it's really a great community. It is. It, it is really, so really welcoming. Is. Yep. And all these great people that you would have never met if it wasn't for you two. You know? Right, so, right. Yeah. And I, it's so much more personal. It's so much mm -hmm. more personal than Facebook or something where you don't get to have right. interactions right. like we do here. Yeah. And it's wonderful. Yeah. I have yeah. uh, my friend in Tennessee. Um, I met a, a lovely young woman on uh, Instagram and it's Kadesh Farms. I don't know if you know sis over at Kadesh Farms. Mm -hmm. um, she lives down in Tennessee and my friend moved from California, Tennessee. And I, I wrote sis over at Kadesh. And I said, my friend just moved there. She has no friends. Would you mind getting together with her for coffee or tea? So she at least feels like she knows somebody. Mm -hmm. And they just hit it off. And there's there's getting together for lunch again tomorrow. And I think it's so wonderful that sis doesn't know me from anybody. But yeah. the fact that I wrote her privately and said, could you do this for somebody who is in need of just some interaction in a strange town? She did it. Mm -hmm. And that was a YouTube Instagram connection, and it was wonderful. Yeah. So it, it's yeah. a great, it's a great uh, community. It is. Even my sister-in-law, when we first got on um, Melissa Jameson, she would say, "Well, I don't do YouTube, but you know, I'm gonna support you." Now, when we talk, we talk almost every day for hours, and it's always about YouTube. Oh, did you see this? She said, "Oh, I was watching YouTube." I'm like, yeah, it just draw you in just like that. And they started gardening and growing and they're doing excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Like, excellent. Oh, good. So I want to jump back real quick yes. because I had it up, but we didn't discuss it. Uh, Celtic Roots Farm says Chicago is derived from the local Indian word. Chicago, a native gar garlic plant. Hmm. So instead of the windy city, it should be the stinky city and be named after the stinky rose. Oh, okay. girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> garlic but i'm trying to convince melissa to get some chickens oh I mean, melissa get some chickens oh i know what i want to ask what are your chickens names um girls girls <laughs> i just say hey girls and they all take off they so funny because the coop is not too big but when i come outside some of them may be inside the coop some of them are outside and when i go out there and say hey girls they come flying out the coop right to the fence. I'm like, goodness gracious. Did you what guys, do you remember the show from the late 70s, early 80s? Do you remember Laverne and Shirley? Mm, Did you ever watch that one? There was, there were two male characters on that show and they would come, they'd always come busting into this girl's apartment, these girls, Laverne and Shirley, and they'd say, mm -hmm. hello ladies. And they were kind of 
smarmy, you know, they were kind of <laughs> creepy guys. And they're like, hello, ladies. Well, every time my husband goes outside and the chickens come running, he goes, hello, ladies. <laughs> I, <was> like, oh. <laughs> I tried to name them, but I wanted to put the, um, I put a band on them when they were smaller, but we were afraid that it would get too tight. So we just cut it off and called yeah. them girls. Mm -hmm. All my girls, their names are Betty. They're all, all of them. All the girls yeah. are named Betty. And all my all of my roosters are named Archie. So I have Archie and Betty. Yeah. Except I do have I do have Porter Wagner and I have Dolly Parton. Mm. I've got one little chicken. She's the breastiest thing I've ever seen in my life. So I named her Dolly. <laughs> Lenny and Squiggy. Lenny and Squiggy. <laughs> yep. Lenny oh, and Squiggy. Wifey knows. Definitely our family. So yeah. yes. It jumped on me. I was going to pull hers up there. You yes. two change that. I have family here. Absolutely. Yep. All Mike types of family. Day. Hey, Huga Homestead. How are uh, you doing? Huga. Yeah, the big ragu just passed away. Carmine Raguso from that show just passed away, Celtic Roots. Isn't mm. that sad? He's such a I big one um, singer. When people say Huga, they say, is it Haggy? He hi you and I'm like Hooga. Hooga. I know he can't get me, but I'm like, it's Hooga. Hooga chugga, hooga chugga, hooga chugga. I was guilty of that also. So I was, you know. Yeah, babe, it's Hooga. Oh, Hooga. Welcome, guys. Welcome. We've just been having a great time uh just chatting with Cherie and Bobby. And we are at one hour and 16 minutes. And I will let everybody know. I am, I have no idea. I don't know if uh, Streamer will just cut us off when I hit the limit because you get 20 hours free a month. And I know right now I'm like 19 hours and probably 40, 45, 50, 55 minutes. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know that they had a limit like that. I know you can only stream for six hours per stream. You get 20 hours a month unless you buy their service. And I just have the free because I'm here at home. And so just my crochet stuff is the only way I make any money. Mm -hmm. And that just goes into buying more yarn. <laughs> so I don't yeah. make any money. So I'm not going to spend money on StreamYard. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Of course, Southern Song and Grown, you... You have my email, so you can get in touch with us. You really? You can drink that. You <laughs> <laughs> left like a swig in there. Sometimes that's all you need is a swig. Nah. Just a swig. I know I'm sitting here going like this with my tea. It's all gone. There's nothing left of it. Yeah. <laughs> so Who homestead? Hold my beer. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, Celtic Roots, we discussed. Chicago for the native garlic plant. We did we did speak about that. Chicago. I thought when he when he actually came back with the answer, I'd be like, mm, I heard that somewhere before, but I never heard never. that ever. <laughs> Huga Homestead says they have one named Hold My Beer and one named Karen. <laughs> <laughs> the, I want to um, meet the chicken, chicken that's named Hold My Beer. <laughs> I was naming them. I was naming my girls. I said, "Oh my goodness, I can't keep up." We had twenty at the time. Like, I think three of them got beat up or something. Oh. But all of a sudden, like, you go out there and one of the chickens pass away, and I'm like, "What the hell?" But it was nothing you could tell that was going on. So I said, "I don't know," but huh. some of them are very aggressive. Yeah. yeah, I think we're probably gonna not do Rhode Island Reds again. <laughs> I think yeah. they're the mean ones. Rhode Island Reds and, and, and the Layhorns are, are mean too, but they lay so good. But oh my god, they are some true. Yeah, <laughs> and that's yeah, just I, have, I like I like my barred rocks, but they're not as social as uh, my buff Orpingtons that I've had. Mm. And uh, I like the Buff Orpingtons because they're they're really good for these cold weathers. But mm -hmm. this year, this is the first year I have well summers, and they're from Holland, and they're very beautiful, and they give me beautiful color eggs. Mm. Okay. What color? What color eggs do they? 
I get anywhere from blue to dark green. They're like olive eggers. I get all just, or Easter eggers. I get all kinds of shades of olives and greens and blues from my well summers. And right. then I get brown eggs from my, uh, from my barred rocks. See, I didn't, I didn't know it was some more chickens that actually give multiple color eggs. So yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I get some. Like a whole bunch of Easter eggs. Yeah. I but, get the most. I just love it because every time I go out, it's just it's just a different array of colors, and I love yes. them. Yes. Oh, so one chicken would lay different colors? No, like one chicken will probably her eggs are always going to be like the okay. dark dark olive, and this one's always going to be the lighter blue, and this one's always going to be the the mint green, and. But they are calm, nice chickens. <laughs> Because I think our chickens, I told them, if y'all keep on, you're going to end up in the freezer. <laughs> oh, no. They Your chickens lay devil they, eggs. They love us. They just be mean to, to each, each other, other sometimes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't you like that. In there, like one chicken um, was out there running for his life and screaming. And I let her out because I'm like, why are they beating her up? And they just pecking at her. You know, they, they molting now. I'm like, let me just let her out. And she was so pleased to be out. She was just walking around behind me and exploring the yacht, never run. I would go to pick her up, and she was okay with it. So I'm like, why are they beating her up so bad? It's just so mean. So we put it's her in the mean. They can be. They can yeah. be mean. My One of my chickens actually just come and walked in the house the other day. She's so curious. <laughs> <laughs> you say your chickens came from Iceland, so they wouldn't do well down here, right? Because it's too it's hot. Too You'd have to you'd have to have you'd have to make sure that you've got good ventilation and stuff for your if you've got some of those heftier breeds, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the but, ones we got uh they're more suited for our area. Yeah. We did some yeah. research. Yeah, like I mean, there are some beautiful chickens I'd love to consider getting, but I'm not gonna bring them up to where you know it's it's this cold. Oh, yeah. And luckily we've got we've got a really nice setup for them so that they don't get the drafts and They've got places to be at nighttime and then they come and they just run the orchard during the daytime. It doesn't matter how cold it is. There are times though, where we have to shovel enough snow out of the way so they can make it to their water. And mm. sometimes we have ducks and sometimes the ducks will come running out and then they just turn around and we'll run right back in. They're like, nope, <laughs> that's not going to happen today. <laughs> that's how my girls, that's how my um, puppies are when it rains. It's like they come out dancing because they got to go to the bathroom. If it's raining, they at the door like, oh, <gasps> Oh no, I can't go out there. And I'm like, I thought you had to go to the bathroom. The girl all day, she will go back and forth to the door. I'm like, Nala, just go pee. It's like she gonna melt if she get wet. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you're a hundred pounds. You afraid of water? <laughs> <laughs> our our little blind dog, he knows when the weather's not right. He'll step out, he pees on the welcome mat, and then runs back in. <laughs> Look at what wifey said. If the chicken walks into the kitchen, show her the pot to the nope. pot. <laughs> nope, nope, no crock pot for these girls. <laughs> no crock pot for these girls. Well, guys, we're at one hour, 23 minutes. I'm afraid we're just going to get cut off, and I don't want to risk that. So I am going to say thank you so much for spending the evening with me. I've thoroughly enjoyed having you. I love you both. I love the interaction that we have in this wonderful soil family that you have embraced us into. And um, I'm blessed to call you friend. Aww. So thank you so much for, for sharing your lives with us tonight. And thank you everybody in the chat. Please make sure if you have not subscribed yet to Black's Tropical Homestead, you go over, make sure you watch a video or two, give them a thumbs up, comment and hit the subscribe button. They have a really great channel. So Thanks. to everyone in the chat, thank you so much for joining us. And if you haven't subscribed to me yet, I don't know what's taking you so long. Come on. We have quickies <laughs> every week. We have coffee chats on Wednesdays. And I do weird stuff that people are like, what are you doing? We have no idea what you're up to. Always <laughs> <want> to <be laughs> awesome. If you go to my community page, I do have a poll up right now. Make sure you vote on the poll. I've got something coming up at the first of the year. But thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here with me, you guys. Love you, and I appreciate you, and look forward to more things from you in 2022. Thank this you very great. much. Thank you, chat. Thank you all. Good night. <laughs> good night to you, and good night to chat. I appreciate you all so much, and we will see you again soon. 
Good night, Good night everybody. Family. <laughs>